man, we're in the kitchen right now. Mm -hmm. And if you were with us last week, you'll quickly see that we've done a lot of progress in this area. In fact, we've grounded the tiles and now we're getting ready to install the second tap on our wooden sink. Now to get to this point, we also had to put some extra elbow grease on the wooden sink, which means that we've added one liter of linseed oil and we've also waxed it, mm. right? We've waxed it, actually we've put four coats of wax and uh, it changed the color of this thing slightly, but we're really, really happy with the result, huh? Yeah. So, so far we've had the sink in use this side for one week and I mean we've had no problem whatsoever with it. Not really. Yeah. And because it took us some time to decide what kind of tap we'd go uh, with for the second sink and once we had decided which tap we'd go with it took the time to some time for the tap to arrive. Um, so yeah so we got the second tap just today. Yeah. And so basically what you'll see next is us installing the second tap on the wooden sink. You'll also see the wooden sink in action. And we also have a big reveal to show you because the kitchen is very much in use right now. Yeah. So we're done installing the second tap on our wooden sink. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, while Dan is getting his tools together, let me just update you a little bit on what's been happening with our countertop. Some of you might remember that we've built this made out of leftovers and bits of studs that we had left. And in the past week, we've been doing a bit of work on it. Uh, notably, we've waxed it. I think it was uh, two coats of wax and we've stand it a little bit. So it looks pretty good right now. And uh, it's all part of today's big reveal. Another project that we've tackled this week was the restoration of these little knobs right here. Um, so we decided to slash a little bit on the faucet. So that meant that we had to kind of reuse some of the old knobs that we had from the flip, but that's okay to us. That was kind of a sacrifice that was worth it.
that beauty. It's amazing, yeah? That's wicked good. Wicked good, it looks. It looks really good. We have had a lot of questions about our wooden sink as we were building, so let us just try to answer some of them today by just giving you a quick recap of the step that we took. So at first, Dan uh, got a sketch, and then he's extracted the measurement to build three frames. One of them, which would be the outer of the sink, and the two wooden frame, which are the actual sink. From there, he's built up the two boxes with tongue and groove, and he's made sure that every single layer was just generously glued together and tightly, tightly fitted. He's doused a few areas as well. After this, he's applied a mixture of glue and sawdust just to fill up any cracks in the sink. And this meant that the sink would be really, really watertight. He's let that dry for 24 hours. The next step was to build the bottom. So he's built it with tongue and groove. And then once again, he's made sure to apply a generous layer of glue in between each plank. He's also added a 10 degree slope to the bottom. This way the water would just expel nicely from the sink. Then it was time to reinforce the sink. So he's created some little patterns that he's glued and nailed at the bottom of the sink. Later, he's added everything in the frame and he's added some really nice trimming just to make sure that everything looks really polished. He squeezed the whole thing together and he's let that dry for quite a few days if my memory serves me well. Now the last step that he had to take from there, which we don't have on camera, was actually to douse all the screw holes and then of course to sand the whole module. Later, we've added some bitum and we've made sure that any micro cracks were filled so that our sink would be really, really watertight. Dan's then added the plumbing. He's made sure to put the fitting in not too tight. This way, the wood would have room to swell because the next step was to add six liters of linseed oil in the sink itself. That, that was quite a laborious task. So if you're planning to replicate this, think about assigning at least three weeks. But it, the result is totally worth it, as you can see. And we're really, really happy with the way our wooden sink turned out. And we hope you like it too.
Well, this is it then. We've done massive, massive uh, progress in our kitchen this week, right? Yeah. We have still a lot of work to do because right now, of course, we don't really have our cement counter poured in, in place because before we do the cement counter, we need to build the island. But right now, the setup that we have totally works for us. Yeah, I mean, we're up to the uh, combination of this. Yeah, the bathroom kitchen combo, we are out of there and that's really good news. And this space is totally functional for us. It means that we can kind of use the green uh, cabinet just to store out all our food and some of our, some of our little cups and spoons and things like that. And we got running water in the proper height. Yes, we have running water in the kitchen. I mean, this is a major, major step up for us and it totally increases our comfort level. But make no mistake, the kitchen isn't done yet. We still have plenty to show you. In fact, the final result um, in our mind, in our, in our final kitchen, what we see is that we're going to have some cabinets right here, some green cabinets that Dan will build. Right here, we're going to have a beautiful white concrete countertop, an island right here, and then right under the sink, we're going to have some special compartments for root vegetables that we're going to be building quite soon, right? Yep. At the moment, pretty much everything is kind of dependent on the wood being dry. And so when we were, when we were like, taking ownership of the kitchen really. <laughs> when we started moving in, we had to move the wood that we had drying up on that shelf, if you remember. So we moved that into our bedroom. In the process, we freestacked the wood and we noticed that not all the wood is dry yet. Yeah, still some boards that are missing the core dryness. So. Yes. And we rather wait and start building with the wet wood. Yeah, totally. Because building with wet, wet wood just brings problem later down the line. Yeah. So we're going to be patient, and then but there's still plenty of stuff to do around the homestead. Yeah. Which means that next week we are going to be in the garden. Yeah. Right. Have to, we have to take advantage of the weather now. I think. Yes. It's uh, sunny outside, and the weather is the temperature is quite good. So, which means the progress outside is fairly. It needs to happen because our last frost date is March 21st to 31st and right now we are March 14th which means that we only have one week to get some kind of garden uh, going just to get our crops into the soil. Yeah like, exactly and to do that we need to fence it in for the chickens and the doves mm -hmm. so we need to continue with the, with the fencing with the weaving the fence. Yes the weaving, the fence weaving project very much needs to happen right now. Yeah, and it's mostly to contain the, keep the crops safe from, from all the dogs and the chickens. Because they have, a, the dogs have taken up a playroom in, in the garden beds, of course. So it has to happen. We, we have to limit <laughs> their space. They have an acre to run on, but they decided, of course, just to have fun in our garden. Anyway, guys, we really hope that you'll enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks again for watching and see you next week. See you. Ciao, ciao. Bye.